Good day grade 11s. Welcome to our next lesson on functions. In this lesson we're going to be talking about exponential graphs and again we're just going to be going through the stuff we learned last year and then expanding on it. So let's start. It says draw the graph and label the asymptotes and give the domain and range of y is equal to 3 to the x. So this is obviously an exponential graph and what we should remember from exponential graphs is that it always goes through the 1 on the y-axis unless it's been shifted or played, messed around with. With, and this hasn't been messed around with at all but let's just check it okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put some numbers in so let's let x equal 0 therefore y is going to be 3 to the 0 which equals 1 so when x is 0 y is 1 beautiful let's now let x equal minus 1 if x equals minus then you've got y is equal to 3 to the negative 1 which is a third okay so that's over here and if we let x equal 1 we've got y is equal to 3 to the 1 which is just 3 so when x is 1 y is 3 so therefore we've got this beautiful exponential curve where it is not quite touching I'm sure it looks like it but it's not it's not quite touching the x-axis okay but it is going all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity when it comes to the x values so if we had to write the domain and range I'm going to do it over here your domain is your x values for which this is valid and you can see it's going to carry on from ever to minus infinity and it can carry on ever to positive infinity so we can just say x is an element of real values but your range is special because this is the asymptote here your x-axis is the asymptote and therefore we can say that y equals zero is our asymptote so that means that the graph is never going to touch that but it also means that it's going to never go below it therefore your y is going to be an element of real values for y is greater than zero let's look at another example this time we've got y is equal to minus two times 3 to the x. So 3 to the x is what we were playing with before but now we're multiplying it with a minus 2. So let's see what happens again if we just substitute in our vari values. So if we let x equal negative 1. Do you agree we've got y is equal to minus 2 times by 3 to the negative 1 which becomes minus 2 times a third which is just minus 2 over 3. So if x equals minus 1, y is now minus 2 thirds. If we let x equal 0, we have y is equal to minus 2 times 3 to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. So therefore this is just minus 2. So when x is 0, y is minus 2. And let's just let x equal 1 again. Then do you agree that y is equal to minus 2 times by 3 to the 1, which is minus 6. So when x is 1, y is minus 6. So you can see that a couple of things have happened with this graph. The first is that it's been flipped. Before it used to be in the top half of this graph paper and now it's on the bottom half. So what has happened is that this negative in front has flipped it from a positive graph to a negative graph. Secondly, normally we know that anything with 3 to the 0 is going to go through 1. So anything to the power of 0 should go through 1. So therefore, normally exponential graphs will always go through a value of 1. But now not only will it go through minus 1, but we've multiplied it by 2. So you can see that now it is going through a value of negative 2. So we've not only flipped this, but we've stretched it. Okay, now let's talk about the domain. The domain is still going to be going from minus infinity. It's much steeper and slower to go to positive infinity, but it'll get there. So therefore, x is an element of real values, no problem. y, now the range, the range y is still an element of real values because it's seen on this Cartesian plane but what? Are there any positive y values? No. Does it ever cross this x-axis? No. Therefore y has to be smaller than 0 and that there where y equals 0 is my asymptote. 
Let's try another thing. Now we've got y is equal to 3x plus 1. Okay, so we know from now, from previous times that if we're adding a number at the end, what are we doing? We're actually just shifting this graph up. Okay, so let's have a look and see if we're right. So again, we're going to just let x equal minus 1. Then your y is going to be 3 to the minus 1 plus 1, which is going to be 1 and a third. So when x is minus 1, y is now going to be 1 and a third. x is 1 and a third. Let's let x equal 0. Therefore y is now going to be 3 to the 0 plus 1. Anything to the 0 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2. So now this goes through 2. And then we've got let x equal 1 Therefore, y is going to be 3 to the 1 plus 1, which equals 4. So now what's happened is when x is 1, y is 4. So all that's happened to this graph is we have shifted it upwards. We have shifted this graph upwards. Okay. Now the domain, again, is going to be x is an element of real values. But, but, and I actually again have to just fix my graph because I've done something wrong here. Let me show you what it is. Since we have moved this graph up before the asymptote used to be the y equals one line, I mean y equals zero line. But now because we've moved it up, this is my new asymptote, which is the y equals one line. So that's my y equals one line. So the previous drawing where I was drawing it just rough, I actually crossed that line and you can't do that. So you need to be very careful about that. So now your domain is an element of real numbers, but your range, your range is what? It can obviously it has to be an element of real values, but, but it can only be the positive values above y equals 1. So therefore y has to be greater than 1. Right, so what do we know about exponential graphs? We know the standard form is y is equal to a b to the x plus q, where if a is messing with your amplitude and your positive and negative graphs and your q is shifting it up and down. So let's have a look at this. It says if b is bigger than 1, in other words a nice big number like 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever, then if a is smaller than 0 we have a negative gradient Okay, negative gradient. Where if a is bigger than 0, we have a positive gradient. And this is when b is bigger than 1. In other words, it's a whole number, it's bigger than, uh, bigger than 1. If q is greater than 0, what do we do? We're shifting this graph up. And if q is smaller than 0, we are shifting it down. Whereas if b is a fraction, in other words, it's between naught and 1, then this swaps, okay? And the reason swaps is because the minus times the minus is a positive. So this time, if a is smaller than 0, we end up with a positive gradient, whereas if a is bigger than naught, we end up with a negative gradient. And q still shifts it up or down, depending on whether it's positive or negative. Now let's look at our new form. The new form is y equals a b to the x plus b plus q. So your a kind of tells us if it's positive or negative and it also tells us if it's got a very steep gradient or not so much. q we know shifts this up or down so we can obviously suspect that this yeah this x plus p must either shift it left or right. But let's look at these examples and see what we get. So We've got f of x is 2 to the x. Okay, we know that that's going to go through 0. When x is 1, y is minus 1 is a half. And when x is 1, y is 2. So we're just going to beautifully draw that there. So that there is our basic f of x equals 2 to the x. Now let's change color. And then do g of x equals 2 to the x minus 2. And the best way to get to grips of what this is doing is we're just going to plot some points. So we're going to say, okay, when x is 1, then we have y is equal to 
2 to the 1 minus 2, which is 2 to the negative 1, which is a half. So when x is 1, x is 1, y is a half. When x is 2, we've got y is equal to 2 to the 2 minus 2, which is 2 to the 0, which is 1. So when x is 2, y is 1. And let's just do when x is minus 1, y is going to be 2 to the minus 1 minus 2, which is 2 to the negative 3, which equals 1 over 8. So therefore, when x is minus 1, y is very close. So this graph is doing that. Now it may look like we've moved this over, but if you look at this value here, this value here is saying when x is 0, y is 1. Now we're saying when x is 2, y is 1. So what have we done? We've actually shifted this graph over to the right by 2. Now let's have a look at the next graph, and I'm going to call it my green graph, because we're going to do it in green. So if we do this and we just again plot some points, so let's let x equal 0. Then do you agree y is going to be 2 to the 0 plus 2, which is going to be 2 to the 2, which equals 4. So when x is 0, y is 4. Let's let x equal minus 2. Then y is going to be 2 to the minus 2 plus 2, which is going to be 2 to the 0, which equals 1. So therefore we know that when x is minus 2, y is 1. So this graph here has been shifted over what? It's been shifted over to the left. To the left. So if this is positive, we're shifting over to the left. And if it's negative, we're shifting it over to the right. So let's look at our effects of a, p, and q on y is equal to a, b to the x plus p plus q. So if we say that q is bigger than naught, we are shifting the graph up, right? We can see that because look at what happens to our horizontal asymptote. It goes up, goes up, goes up, and goes up. If q is smaller than naught, we are shifting it down. There we go. Okay, everybody happy with that? Now, if a is smaller than 0, you are always going to get a negative gradient assuming your b's are bigger than number, bigger than 1. This is assuming, all assuming that your b is bigger than 1, okay? Then, it doesn't matter if we're moving this up or down, left or right, okay, your gradient, if it's negative, is going to be a negative gradient over here. If your a is negative, if a is positive, it slopes up to the right. There we go. Now let's talk about p being bigger than 0 or p being smaller than 0. So if p is bigger than 0, let's just have a look at these two graphs. Do you see that here? What has happened? The graph is going from here to there, which means that if it is smaller than 0, we are moving it to the right, where if it's, I mean, yes, we are moving it to, if p is smaller than 0, sorry, we are moving it to the right, whereas if p is bigger than 0, we're moving it to the left. So let's do an example just to make sure we understand everything. It says, draw the following graph showing all the asymptotes and determine the domain and range. Now the cool thing grade 11s is they've said that in the curriculum and the guidelines is they cannot make more than two changes. So they can either change your A and your Q or they can change your A and your P etc etc. So don't panic about this okay. And all we're going to do is we're going to plot some points. So we realize already that since this is minus 1 this graph has been moved down by a minus 1. So we know that there is a horizontal asymptote at minus 1. Now all we need to do is work out where these things cut the x and y axis. So let's let, let's see what happens if I let x equal 1. 
If I let x equal 1, what do we get? We get y is equal to 2 to the 1 plus 1 minus 1. So that becomes 2 to the 2 minus 1, which is, two, I mean, minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So when x is 1, y is 3. Now let's see, let's let x equal minus 1. If x equals minus 1, we've got Let's see, we've got y equals 2 to the minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, which is 2 to the minus 1 plus 1 is 0, minus 1, which is 0. So when x is minus 1, y is 0. And then finally, let's do when x is 0. So when x is 0, you've got y equals 2 to the 1 plus, I mean 0 plus 1, minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, which equals 1, which is over here. So then we can just join the dots like that. And that is your new exponential function. So please, grade 11s, go practice your different shifting. Please know the difference and go practice, practice, practice. And of course, most importantly, is just trying to see how these changes will work and if they make sense when you draw them. Have a lovely day.